अल्लाह भला करे लास्ट क्लास वट वी वर डूइंग वॉज इफ यू रिमेंबर वी वर डूइंग लेटेस्ट एंथेल्पी एंड वो वॉज लेटेस्ट एंथेल्पी लेटेस्ट एनर्जी एंड लेटेस्ट एंथेल्पी और एनर्जी वॉज डिफाइंड एज हाउ हाउ कैन आई डिफाइन दैट देर वर सर्टन रिएक्शन वी सॉ दैट रिप्रजेंटेड लेटेस्ट एंथेल्पी एंड बेसिकली या थैंक यू फॉर रिमाइंडिंग मी टू स्टार्ट रिकॉर्डिंग थैंक यू Amar, Amar. So, yeah. Mm, so where was I? So we saw some reactions about formations, and we saw some reactions about lattice energy. And remember, formations, uh, are, uh, the reaction that is delta H formation is what? It is when elements in their standard state become compound, and uh, that is formation. And delta H lattice was when. gaseous ions become uh ionic compound obviously lattice enthalpy is not uh, unlimited in terms of the scope it has it is limited to only ionic compounds okay now for example okay sorry i keep hitting this huh. so what we did was we saw that uh, allah bhala kare aapka jab hum sodium को रियाक्ट किया था हमने ये से शुरू किया था ना सोडियम हाफ सी एल टू बिकमिंग सोडियम क्लोराइड नाउ वी डेड दैट ऑन दी अदर हैंड वी आल्सो डेड दिस सोडियम वन प्लस गैस बिकमिंग सी एल माइनस गैस दीज आर टू डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ रिएक्शंस वी एनकाउंटर्ड द वन इन वाइट ऑन टॉप इज वॉट वी कॉल ए फॉर्मेशन रिएक्शन एंड द वन इन ब्लू एट द बॉटम इज वॉट वी कॉल ए लेटेस्ट एंड थैल्पी रिएक्शन दे बोथ make the same exact thing which is in this case what sodium chloride sodium chloride solid form mein but but what but we basically uh, have this when we make them both but we have what you may call it uh formation is from elements to becoming a solid while lattice is from ions becoming a solid I was differentiating between a formation reaction and a lattice enthalpy reaction. They might make the same thing, but the lattice enthalpy reaction is what we encounter if we break up the formation into multiple steps. And we had seen that earlier. I mean, I'll give you another example though. Like if I were to talk about the compound uh, Al2O3, for Al2O3, its lattice enthalpy might be just simply be when you want to make Al2O3 from what? from its ions in the gaseous state and obviously you need two aluminum ions and three oxide ions in the gaseous state and it is a lattice enthalpy but the formation will be making aluminum oxide using the elements in the standard state aluminum being solid and oxygen being gas and that still makes al2o3 solid in this case you need two als and 3 over 2 o2s and we are perfectly fine with using fractions remember yeah so here the blue reaction is also lattice and while the red one a uh, white one is what you call it the uh formations and where did we see these two reactions we saw this when i broke up the formation into multiple steps so i'll go back to this guy because we saw this earlier and if you remember one of the first things we did last class was to break up the formation of sodium chloride कहाँ गया अल्लाह भला करे अल्लाह भला करे ओके ओके दिस इज द रिएक्शन नाउ इफ यू रिमेंबर आई डिड दिस वी ब्रोक इट अप इनटू मल्टीपल 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 स्टेप्स एक्चुअली नॉट दैट मेनी मल्टीपल्स बट व्हाट वी डिड वाज वी फर्स्ट वांटेड टू कन्वर्ट सोडियम इनटू अ गैसियस एटम and we converted chlorine into a gaseous atom then 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 we converted sodium into a positive ion and we converted chlorine into a negative ion now the yellow arrows represent the form uh, the atomizations of the elements atomization of chlorine and atomization of sodium and the blue ones on the left is the first ionization energy of sodium and on the right it is the first electron affinity of chlorine basically 
yes so basically if if these were my stages this would be like my my starting stage that i'm just making an outline in so yeah we did this then we went into gas what did we do we made into gaseous atoms atoms and then we converted them into ions ions and where did we encounter lattice energy when the ions made ionic solid and this was lattice lattice eh? all right so basically if you had to find this value and this is your starting stage and this was your end stage yeah, and this arrow the white one is formation you can go from start to end directly which is delta x formation or you can go indirectly which would be the atomization of sodium which is the yellow arrows and the atomization of chlorine then the blue arrows the first ionization energy of sodium and then the first electron affinity of chlorine and then the yellow arrow which is the lattice enthalpy of sodium chloride and using Hess cycle and this equation if I'm given everything else this is how I find the value for lattice enthalpy okay and today we're gonna find the values using a specific cycle this is called a Hess cycle because it has multiple stages and there's a starting and the ending stage what we're gonna do is also try to draw this a different way because right now as you see there's no way to tell by looking at it which reaction is exo and which is endo but I'd like to know that uh, visibly represent that because for example I know this by knowledge that atomization is endo both of these are endo I know that ionization is endo but electron affinity is generally exo and lattice enthalpy is exo and formation is never under remember never confirmed but it could be exo or endo we don't know but my point being that this is all we know we know this stuff now I want to be able to map this onto a graph that you might remember from O levels where it was like this you start off with reactants and you make products and you remember that this was called the energy profile diagram or energy level diagram and the first part was endo and the second part was exo yeah and we've used this for bond energy bond breaking bond forming but this can be applied to everything we will actually apply these to these okay so let's do that let's apply this to this so let's map this that i just drew sorry let's just map all of this into a cycle like this so what I'm doing is I'm gonna start off with my elements and go to my products which is the compound but I'm gonna in all the endothermic reactions are going to be going up in the energy level and exo will be coming down and that's what we're gonna be doing so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take something like this we're gonna take an energy level diagram and so let me make that for you so let's say this is my energy level diagram and I'm going to start off with my elements elements being sodium and actually no that's with a different color so element being sodium solid and half chlorine gas the what I want to do is you see I want to be able to first convert my sodium into sodium gas but leave my chlorine there now this is my starting stage somewhere we don't know the value here but I know that when I want to convert sodium into gas it's an endothermic reaction hence the arrow is pointing upwards and everything that is endo will point upwards and everything that's exo will point downwards so remember in our step-by-step -step method I'm sorry about the accent I'm just so bored I'm trying to entertain myself why teach you guys this are the two first in the smaller steps this is the direct reaction we do not care about the direct one first we care about the individual ones so i'm going to talk about this 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 and this now these two are endothermic endothermic so the first two three are endothermic then exo then exo and then the final reaction so let's i'm actually just placing all of these into a vertical diagram 
And what is a vertical diagram? You start off with your elements and you atomize your elements first. So in an order, you will first atomize the metal because metals come first, I see, in the name. And then you atomize your non-metal. So my green arrows are atomizations, color coding them. And pele sodium atomized hua, or pele chlorine atomized hua. Then I will want to ionize them. So how will I ionize them? First, I will ionize the metal. We call that what? Ionization energy. And now sodium becomes one plus ion, and gives off one electron, and nothing happens to chlorine. It stays as is. Okay. So this reaction is e endothermic, and this reaction is also endothermic, and this reaction is also endothermic. I even have the values for this and uh, I can show them to you though I don't um, care about the values but you know if, if it makes it easier to see how about I just show you the values also. I didn't do it for the other two groups. Oops but it's okay. Th I'll send them this one video so everybody can be happy. Yeah. So basically where was I? Where was he? Where was he? Okay, second, take care. So basically, let me just show you. So the first atomization of sodium, this arrow, is about 108 kilojoules, positive. Then the atomization of chlorine is about 122 kilojoules. Then the first ionization energy of sodium is about 500 kilojoules. Then we have the uh, electron plus chlorine becomes chloride negative ion that's called first electron affinity that's minus 3 94 so basically then you go down so now the second yellow arrow is going down to a level where you've produced uh, sodium negative positive ion and chloride negative ion gas gas and the second arrow right here this is the electron affinity ionization energy first electron affinity of chlorine which is minus 364. So atomization, atomization, first ionization, electron affinity. The first three reactions are endothermic going up. And obviously the, you can draw the arrows to scale, minus somewhat scale if you notice this is more than this. And then when these two combine, then these two, sorry, ions combine, gaseous ions, we know what we call that. That will make a pink arrow. And they make what we call uh, they make what mm, sodium chloride solid and the over this reaction is delta H lattice and the overall reaction in white is called delta H formation and uh, yeah this is your starting stage and sodium chloride is your ending stage but this is a Hess cycle but this is a Hess cycle displayed visibly yes uh, somebody ask a question I will I will one answer that one second so basically this is the vertical display of the Hess cycle starting stage multiple stages shown and the final stage and any reaction that goes endothermic goes up in this from the starting stage anything that is negative goes down and that's your overall and we call this the born harbor the same harbor from the harbors process Bon Harbor cycle. Uh, right, we will be going through this again, but right here he's asking about this step. That this step is actually the atomization of chlorine, and something that you might do in AS is that when you take a chlorine molecule and make it into two gaseous atoms, we call this bond energy. But atomization is taking half a mole of these molecules and converting them into one mole of gaseous atoms. So the top one is bond energy, the bottom reaction is called atomization. And for gaseous molecules, delta H atomization is literally half the bond energy. So if they either they will give me data as bond energy or atomization. If they give me bond energy, I half it always to right away make it into atomization. All right. Now this is one bond harbor cycle. We will make two more today. Can we? Can I continue to make two more now? So, so let's look at a second example. Now, how do we solve for this? So now let's do an example with actual data. What is the use for this case? Hmm. So before we do that, I want to give you a summary, quick summary. So this is called a Bon Harbor cycle, and a Bon Harbor cycle has a few steps. And if you learn them, you'll never go wrong. The step is that 
यू स्टार्ट ऑफ फ्रॉम एलिमेंट्स ठीक है यू स्टार्ट ऑफ फ्रॉम एलिमेंट्स बोथ मेटल एंड नॉन मेटल ऑब्वियसली दे हैव टू मेटल नॉन मेटल बिकॉज दे मेकिंग एन आने कंपाउंड सो दिस इज ओनली फॉर आने कंपाउंड एंड इन द फर्स्ट स्टेप यू क्रिएट कन्वर्ट द एलिमेंट्स इन टू वॉट यू कन्वर्ट दम इन टू गैसियस एटम्स ऑब्वियसली दैट्स टू स्टेप्स मेटल एंड नॉन मेटल का देन यू डू आयनाइज ऑब्वियसली वन आयनाइजेशन इज इलेक्ट्रॉन अफिनिटी बट आई एम जस्ट जस्ट राइटिंग इट टूगेदर यू कन वर्ट दम इन टू गैसियस आयनस जनरली स्पीकिंग इफ यू एड ऑल ऑफ द आयनाइजेशन दे विल बी पॉजिटिव देन यू हैव डेल्टा इच लैटिस विच इज द एक्सोथमिक रिएक्शन एंड देर फॉर द ओवरऑल रिएक्शन इज डेल्टा एच फॉर्मेशन इसमें मैंने डेल्टा एच फॉर्मेशन नेगेटिव दिखाया है इट डजेंट हैव टू बी ऑलवेज नेगेटिव बट यू स्टार्ट ऑफ विद एलिमेंट्स गैसियस आइटम्स गैसियस आयंस लैटस दैट्स द ओवरऑल समरी ऑफ द रिएक्शन ऑल राइट ओके सो नेक्स्ट अब सो लेट्स लेकिन एक्चुअल क्वेश्चन नाउ एंड वॉट द एक्चुअल क्वेश्चन द एक्चुअल क्वेश्चन इज that this is to do with potassium fluoride and the reason why we do bon haber cycles is to find the lattice enthalpy so let's find that out the data that has been given to us is that the formation of potassium fluoride is let's say minus 557 kJ per mole and they're saying ji bhai find the lattice enthalpy of potassium fluoride the data they have given me is uh, is that they've given me atomization so the atomization of uh, potassium given to me is 90 kJ per mole and what they've done is they have given to me the bond enthalpy of of fluorine as 158 kJ per mole okay and they have given to me um the first ionization energy of potassium as 420 kJ per mole and the first electron affinity of fluorine is given to me as minus 333 kJ per mole okay and uh, just to be uh, uniform let's do this so the idea was i was trying to erase this uh, and write this again which one the atomization of uh, potassium in a different color so that when i use them in the graph you can see this so delta h atomization of potassium is 90 kJ per mole okay now okay so you know have these four colors now what we need is we can use atomization of potassium we need the atomization of the non metal but they've given me bond energy we need ionization and we have electron affinity The first thing we do is we convert any time they give us bond energy we need that to be converted into atomization. And for a diatomic molecule remember this that atomization is half the bond energy. And the reason for that is we just talked about this that the bond energy is for F2 becoming 2Fs and atomization is for what? Atomization is for half F2 becoming F. So what we have is we're going to use this so atomization is half of 158 which is it should be using the same color what am i doing here so atomization is half of 158 which is 79 kJ per mole so now this is my data and i'm going to now sketch a graph for this a bond haber cycle all right uh, so let me just find another color for a second so i'm going to take a little grayish color to make my outline and i'm going to start off with the elements first so what are my elements i'm starting off with uh, potassium solid and half f2 gas why half f2 gas because i have to make kf and it only needs 1f and in the first step i atomize potassium so literally my first step may i'll atomize potassium that is will be 90 this will be the atomization of potassium in the second step i will atomize so we as so far the fluorine stays as is then in the second step i will atomize fluorine and it becomes f gas and potassium stays as is from the previous step then i will ionize potassium which will be probably be like this it will form k plus plus e gaseous 
and fluorine right now stays as gaseous atom then I have to ionize or electron affinity of fluorine because now fluorine becomes F minus by gaining this extra electron from potassium it becomes F minus and potassium is now K plus stays as K plus and then these two combine to form what KF solid and this is the overall reaction delta HF delta HF now what is the blue arrow blue arrow was the first electron ionization energy of fluorine chlorine sorry potassium and green was the first electron affinity of fluorine and what you do here is that you need to realize is that it's going to be this plus this plus this plus this plus this equals to this Hess's law of summation so 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 my math is delta H uh, atomization of potassium plus delta H atomization of fluorine plus first ionization energy of potassium plus first electron affinity of potassium plus which is this yellow arrow delta H lattice all of this equals to what delta H formation and now having the values let's put the values in here so what is put uh, atomization of potassium 90 uh, atomization of so chlorine 79 uh, what you might call it first IE of potassium which is uh, 420 then the second IE of what was I potassium is this the first electron affinity of fluorine is minus 333 three three plus the lattice enthalpy we do not know all of that equals to minus 557 five and we solve for x this way and somebody be kind enough to tell me what x is I believe it is going to be minus 813 the reason being I just did this with the previous group so I remember the value what do you guys think huh looks beautiful Let's do, let's do the same Born Harbor cycle. This is the Born Harbor cycle. This is the data. This is the Hess cycle solution for that. Remember, Born Harbor cycle is just a very specialized Hess cycle. Let's do it for another molecule. Another, sorry, not molecule. Toba, toba, toba. Uh, another, a molec uh, another compound called calcium chloride. So let's do it for calcium chloride, where I tell you that the formation of calcium chloride is minus 815 kilojoules per mole and I want to find the lattice enthalpy of calcium chloride find that for me okay so let's say I want to do that okay then yeah let's move it up how about that yeah so the kind of data that will be given to me would be for the atomization of the metal and ionization of the metal and atomization of the non-metal and electron affinity for the non-metal. The reason why I've taken this example is because it's me do cheese hai. It's me calcium is becoming a two plus ion. So you gotta encounter one plus and two plus. While chlorine is becoming a there are two chlorines being used. So you gotta make sure that you remember that there are two ionization energies for calcium at play here. And secondly, that whatever you do, you're doing it for two chlorine atoms because the formula is CaCl2. So that's two things, okay? So let's start off with the most optimum thing. The first kind of data that will be given will be the atomization of the metal. And that's given to us as 176 kilojoules per mole. Then it'll be the atomization of the non-metal. Have they given us that? I do not know. Let's check out. So the atomization of the non-metal of chlorine is given to me as 122 that's brilliant because if they had given me bond energy it will be for so you bond energy DOT so we'll have that to find the uh, value for one chlorine remember bond energy represents Cl2 becoming two Cl gas atomization is exactly half of that so they have a relationship bond energy's value is twice that of atomization because bond energy is when one molecule becomes two atoms 
Atomization is when half a molecule mole of molecules becomes one mole of atoms. They have given me the value for this. And atomization is per mole of chlorine. All right. Now the other data points that I would need are the first IE of calcium, which is 590. It'll give me the second IE also as 1100 and the last thing they'll give me is the first electron affinity of uh, chlorine which is minus 364 we have all of this this is all in kilojoules per mole and what we are going to do with the, all this info is to make a Bonhaber cycle so this is as nice and neat a Bonhaber cycle I can attempt maybe what I can do is yes I can create some more space now that I've written my data, I want some little more space. So I'll just make a head cycle like that, a bone harbor cycle like that. Yeah, from there to there. Mm. Sorry, I know the class is about to end. I'm just going to finish this fast. Okay. Now, so what we do is we start off from the elements. The elements being calcium solid and chlorine gas. Since you want CaCl2, you will take Cl2. If it was NaCl, you take half Cl2. And the first step, you will atomize calcium into gas. And chlorine stays as is, hence the color is the original color. The reason why I'm keeping chlorine color the same is because to show that they didn't change, only this change. And what is this change? The color corresponding to the data given here. Therefore, this value for this is 176. I can write the value also instead of the label. That's fine, right? This is the atomization of calcium. Then I will atomize chlorine. So now atomization of chlorine goes with the white arrow. So white manata row. In this case, you will make two, because you are starting with Cl2, you'll make two chlorine gaseous atoms. And even though my data was given for 122, which is for one chlorine atom, I am making here two chlorine atoms. So the value for this arrow will be two times 122. Because I am using up, I am making two chlorine atoms and this atomization is for one chlorine atom. That should answer your question, Hassan. Because we will not half it, we will, one atomization is for one chlorine atom. Here I have two chlorine atoms. So the value will be two times 122. Once I've done that, then I will atomize my calcium. So calcium will become 1 plus and then 2 plus. But because I can do this for calcium is I can directly make it into 2 plus. And this blue arrow then not just becomes 590, it becomes 590 plus 1100. 0, 0. Because it will become the sum of the first and second ionization energies of calcium. And once it's done that, then and at this stage, chlorine stays as 2 Cl atoms. Now obviously this will also give two electrons. Then the two electrons and the two chlorines will become and obviously my arrows are pretty sh crap but let's say it becomes uh, the calcium stays as calcium 2 plus gas and chlorine becomes 2 chloride gas and this downward green arrow would be 2 times minus 364. Why 2 times minus 264? Exactly the same because this one is for one electron, one mole of chlorine atoms. We are converting two moles of chlorine atoms into two moles of chloride ions. Hence, this will be twice as much. And then all of this combines together to give us our product calcium chloride solid. And this will be lattice enthalpy. And uh, this arrow right here will be delta HF. And the math for this would be that basically 176 plus 2 times 122 plus 590 and 1100 0, 0 plus 2 times minus, this is plus 2 times minus 364. In fact, I can move this all there mm -hmm, and just move this right here. Hopefully you can all see that, yeah. And then, let me just zoom out even, you know, why not? Since we can see all of that. Plus the lattice enthalpy, which is unknown to me. 
this equals to the total delta HF which is given to us at the start of the question as minus 815. Now I have all of that and so assault for x and then assault for x I will get minus 2197 and why this is the atomization of the metal atomization of the non-metal ionization of the metal electron affinity of the non-metal element atoms involved lattice enthalpy equals to delta hf and we solve this and we'll get the lattice enthalpy of cl cl2 and so i can declare with absolute certainty that using this math the lattice enthalpy of calcium chloride is minus 2197 kilojoules per mole and this is how we use bon haber cycle to find the lattice enthalpies of ionic compounds and this is the mic drop moment <laughs> yes this is the end of the class